Good morning, everyone. It's time for us to get our plenary session kicked off this morning. I'm thrilled to see everyone uh, back again. Some of you were early risers and here for our bonus sessions this morning with Adobe and Thomson Reuters, and we thank you for that and coming to participate. One of the things I learned very quickly um, becoming and, and serving this past year as president is that every time you walk anywhere at a conference, people are handing you slips of paper and saying, here's an announcement to make, here's an announcement to make. So I've got a few announcements for you. Um, some of the, the conference planning committee folks have asked me to make a special uh, request for not only the plenary sessions but also the workshop sessions uh, if you would please take a few minutes after the sessions to complete the evaluation forms. Uh, apparently the, the numbers of evaluations were a little on the light side yesterday and just in case you're wondering, we don't just collect those and toss them in a box somewhere. The conference planning committee really takes a lot of time going through those, looking at the results, trying to pay attention to the comments that you provide, telling us what works and what doesn't work, and every year we try to improve your conference experience. So any thoughts you can help us out with would be greatly appreciated. Uh, next, for all of our past presidents, just a reminder that there will be a past presidents meeting and luncheon today at 1145 in the Harvest Bistro Cafe. Uh, so if you can please join in with that, we would appreciate your participation. And I think the last announcement right now is uh, some of you are, that have been regulars at NACOM conferences are familiar with our Court to Court Showcase. Uh, for the last several years, we've had a couple of very dedicated NACA members who have sought out special projects, special initiatives in courts around the country. Oftentimes, our Justice Achievement Award winners from past years and, and honorary mentions from past years are sought out. And they try to bring to the NACOM conference uh, examples of best practices, examples of innovative programs, things that can be easily replicated in other jurisdictions. So I'd really encourage you, uh, if you've not seen one of these uh, showcases before, to stop by. It will be in the exhibit hall and it will begin at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. So just look for the sign for the Court to Court Showcase and it's also included on your exhibit forms uh, that those of you that came to the bonus session this morning obtained. Uh, so that may be a reminder as well. Uh, and I understand, um, Tom and Joe, there's going to be a giveaway uh, from the Court to Court uh, showcase for folks that come in and it's going to include, I believe, um, a $50 gift certificate for NACA merchandise. So that might be one other incentive to come and join. We have a, a great program for you lined up today, and you may notice in your materials that yesterday our focus was on governance issues. Today you're going to hear more about um, taking the next step and looking at leadership issues, and that's what much of our education is focused around, um, both for the, the plenary sessions and the workshop sessions today. But before we start off, we have a couple of special presentations. Uh, and at this point, I'd like to call up uh, the chairperson of NACOM's planning committee, Stephanie Hess from Ohio, who's going to tell us about the Justice Achievement Award and make a very special presentation. Stephanie. Thank you, Kevin. Good morning. I, I warned Kevin ahead of time that I was going to hijack the podium for a moment before we got started. Um, is Milt Newsom in the hall? Milt Newsom, See, best laid plans. Uh, Milt is my boss and today is his birthday and I was planning on embarrassing him from the podium and he's not here. I sent him a text and I said, are you coming? And he said, yes. I wanted to say hurry up, but... So if you see Milt Newsom throughout the day, I, I would love it if 500 of his closest friends wished him a happy birthday. So my real purpose for being at the podium is to announce the 2012 
Justice Achievement Award winner and honorable mention. We had um, 10 wonderful programs that submitted applications for the award. We had a fantastic subcommittee. Those of you that are familiar with the Justice Achievement Award, the packets that the applicants submit are quite lengthy. They're about 20 pages, pages long. So the subcommittee has to read through each of the applications and come to a decision on um, the winner each year. So if you were on the Justice Achievement Award subcommittee, if you could stand to be recognized for your hard work, I would appreciate it. The Justice Achievement Award was established to publicly recognize courts and related organizations for meritorious projects and exemplary accomplishments that enhance the administration of justice. To that end, we were um, very happy to pick for the 2012 Justice Achievement Award the Minnesota Judicial Branch for their program entitled Implementation of the Minnesota Court Payment Center. And they took a really unique um, view of, uh, you know, all of the payments that courts take in and they were able to implement a statewide payment system that allowed folks to pay traffic tickets whether they were in one county or another. If they had multiple tickets in multiple counties, they could go online and they can make payments all in one place. And it really was a huge savings to um, this whole, the whole entire state. But as you can imagine, implementing a statewide project like that was not without its challenges. And so we're very happy to introduce um, Kay Padretti, Nancy K. Meyer, and Rebecca Becker from the Minnesota Judicial Branch to accept the award. And since we had so many wonderful programs that applied for the award this year, we did want to offer an honorable mention as well to the Scottsdale City Court for the successful implementation of the jail alternative program. Of course, looking for ways to save their jurisdiction money, we're able to implement um, a home incarceration kind of um, program. And I believe in the first, year, the first nine months saved over a million dollars. Um, so that's just a wonderful accomplishment in itself. So I'd like to ask Julie Dibus and Jack Miller to come up and accept the award on behalf of the Scottsdale City Court. It's always fun to see the smiles on the faces of award recipients when they're acknowledged for the work, and we know that all of you um, do significant work in your courts from year to year. So please take advantage of the Justice Achievement Award and send in your nominations, and, and we'd be thrilled to have a chance to look at them. Next, we have a very special guest, someone who has been an incredible supporter for many years of uh, NACOM, of our educational programs, of our publications, and, and many of our conferences. Uh, some of you are very familiar with the State Justice Institute um, in Virginia. Uh, they, uh, they are a great support for many of our court programs, and I'd like to invite their executive director, Jonathan Mattiello, 
to come up to the podium and share a few thoughts about what's happening with the State Justice Institute. Please welcome Jonathan. Good morning. Thank you, Kevin. Well, it's great to see uh, many familiar faces, although there's some new faces. And for, for those of you who do not know me or the State Justice Institute, um, uh, I came over to SJI from the Department of Justice about five years, a little over five years ago, served three years as deputy director before becoming the executive director. And uh, SJI is a federally funded nonprofit agency. Uh, I, I think the best way to describe us is a quasi-federal agency. Um, we, uh, we are the only source of federal funding designated exclusively for the state courts. Um, obviously, the Department of Justice and others do have court funding, but those are, are more tailored towards specific type of programs like uh, problem-solving courts. And I like to say that SJI is there for everything else, and obviously that everything else is a lot. Um, we have a board of directors, and by law it's, it's made up of uh, three chief justices, two trial court judges. Uh, we also have, for the first time, an appellate court judge on our board, and uh, one state court administrator. In addition, we have four members from the public, two from uh, each political party. Those members are... Um, nominated by the Conference of Chief Justices, uh, they're then in turn nominated by the President and, and confirmed by the Senate. It's been a very uh, active two years for SGI in the fact that we've had a complete turnover of our entire board. Uh, and that's after going almost 10 years without a board replacement. So it's been very exciting times for me personally uh, dealing with a new board. And, and a lot that was said yesterday in the morning session really hit home for me because I was sort of going through my checklist making sure we were trying to address some of these things. Um, <clears throat> in terms of grants to, to court associations, in, in the past we have funded educational components of mid-year and annual conferences and have recently been focused on supporting projects outside of the normal conference function. In fact, this marks the third year of SGI support for the educational tracks of the NACOM mid-year and annual conferences and the Board of Directors is very proud of that. I'm also excited because, uh, and many of you have heard of this project, uh, that's enabling NACOM to update and revise its core competencies, which I think is a, a very critical project. Uh, we've partnered with the Department of Justice and Bureau of Justice Assistance to fund that project. Uh, this is in addition to a, uh, a grant we funded two years ago to develop distance learning modules for several of those core competencies. Uh, and I know many of you are familiar with those. Uh, again, we are very happy to support NACOM's important mission in these difficult financial times and value our partnership to advance court administration despite all these challenges that we're facing. Earlier this year, and I had mentioned that we have a, a new board, and obviously with a new board comes new priorities. Uh, our board sat down for several days to just have, hold strategic planning sessions. And out of, and out of those meetings, the board uh, designated priority investment areas for SJI funding. And these are in no ranking order, but they're certainly all extremely important. Uh, Self-represented litigation in the courts, limited English proficiency, reengineering in response to budget reductions, immigration issues in the state courts, which we have actually have been uh, focused on for about four years now, but we're starting to really peel back the onion on immigration issues and looking at specific, uh, specific issues to include human trafficking. And I, uh, stay tuned because I think you're going to see more on uh, work on our, in terms of how the courts are, are dealing with human trafficking and, and just getting out the basic information and education to judges and court managers. And then our final um, uh, priority investment area is guardianship and conservatorship issues. So if, if you're interested in uh, grants in, in your jurisdiction, uh, any of these project areas, or even if it's not, if it's court security or other areas, feel free to give us a call and, and we can certainly discuss those. Um, and lastly, I just I want to encourage you to visit our website, sji.gov. You can sign up for our monthly e-newsletter. Uh, you can read late, latest news. You can get access to, to various grant products. Um, also, we have Facebook and Twitter feeds. Uh, please uh, join those. Uh, and I, I appreciate the opportunity to say a few words here uh, this morning. And I hope you enjoy the remainder of the conference. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Jonathan. I can't tell you how important the SJI support has been to NACOM over the years, and we really do appreciate um, all of the efforts that they've gone through to make sure that we've been able to continue many of the projects and many of the educational offerings that we provide to all of our members throughout the year. Just a couple of other quick announcements, and then I'm going to ask our President-elect Pam Harris to come up and, and kick off our, our keynote this morning. Um, many folks had uh, approached some of the officers and board members yesterday and were very concerned when a news report came out that Stephen Covey had passed away uh, yesterday. And that news report was accurate, that he did pass away, um, but it was the Stephen Covey who was 79 years old. Uh, and in the upper right-hand corner of the projections that we have is Stephen M. R. Covey, his son, who has agreed to be our plenary speaker on Thursday and I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware of the fact that uh, Mr. Covey has agreed to still be here. He will be here to uh, conduct the, the uh, session on Thursday. Um, and uh, just if, if you're aware that he's making that special effort for us here at NACOM, and then he'll be um, returning to be with his family uh, over the weekend. So um, we will still go on as planned on Thursday. And I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware of that. 